Today, we're gonna do a deep dive into making funk. I'm gonna show you lots of details needed to make these beats, sound processing tips, mixing concepts, and a lot of unique tricks along the way. So let's get into it. Now the style of funk I'm gonna be covering today is drift funk. This is a style you might have heard where it has an older, rougher sound quality and the main instrument is that 808 cowbell. Now these beats might seem simple to make on the surface, but there are actually a lot of small details and concepts to get right. Let's start off with the most important bit, which is the 808 cowbell. This is pretty standard and easy to find. You can just go on YouTube, for example. But how it sounds in its original state is pretty far off from how we need it to sound. Like I mentioned, the main sound in these beats is that cowbell, but this cowbell here is probably not robust enough to make our beat sound complete since it doesn't take up enough space. Therefore, our cowbell will probably need some processing. But before we do that, there is one tip that I wanna show you beforehand that I don't think I've seen anyone else talk about. As I mentioned, we'll be using our cowbell to create a pretty complex melody. Therefore, it can be helpful to know what the pitch of our cowbell actually is. Even percussive sounds like a cowbell can have their own pitch at times. Even if you play the C note on the piano roll, this might actually not be a C. If you open up your EQ, whether it's your stock or your paid EQ, this can help you see what your sound is closest to tonally. We can see here that our sound's most prominent peaks are at a G. If you're using FL Studio's EQ, for example, you can take a look to see where the largest peak is. Bring a note over to where that peak is, go into key, and take a look for which frequency here is closest to that peak. This will give you an idea of what pitch this sound is tonally close to, which again is G in this example. So I'm gonna go ahead back into the sample and tune this sound so that every single time I hit a note, it's actually a C. We can even see if we go back into our EQ here, it actually plays a sound that's closer to a C now. And I wanna point out that I'm not saying this is a perfectly tonal sound and not doing this will instantly ruin your beat. This is just a small detail that can help this piece of the puzzle fit a little bit better as we build out our beat. This is something that I talked about in my free 40 minute beat making training, by the way, which you can check out in the description box below. All right, now that we have our cowbell ready, let's go ahead and build out our pattern. Like I mentioned, we're gonna be depending on our cowbell to do a lot of heavy lifting in our beat. So creating a more complex pattern is gonna become somewhat necessary so our beat will actually sound complete. We can start off by creating something really simple though. Now to help this sound take up more space, I'm gonna take some of these notes and create a pattern that has a wider note span. So will just help this sound take up more frequency space by playing in multiple octaves. I'm gonna repeat the same pattern for the second bar, but I'm gonna shift the rhythm of some of these notes around and also play something musically different as well. This will help keep the beat from sounding repetitive. After all, we really only have one main instrument to work with, so we're gonna have to get a little bit more detailed using it. I'm gonna repeat the same pattern from the first bar for the third bar. But for the fourth bar, I'm going to create something a bit more unique here. All right, I think this is a pretty good funk pattern. By the way, a quick little history lesson that you probably didn't know about. Most people don't know where funk originated, so I will tell you. It actually came from Funkistan, capital city of Funkalanta, that has a population of 13 billion Funkophiles. And if you didn't know that and you learned something new, you have to hit the like button. By the way, don't look any of that up, just trust me, it's true. So we have the pattern down, now let's talk about processing. Distortion will be key here, but I do wanna say that not all distortion is created equal. Right now, I need my cowbell to take up more space, but which space it takes up is important. 
if I add a distortion that primarily adds harmonics up in the higher end like this preset here, you can see this distortion adds a lot more higher frequencies. This might not be as helpful though, since one of my goals is to create that older rough sound quality to my beat. And to do that, I don't want as many bright frequencies in my beat overall. Therefore, most of what this distortion provides isn't going to be as useful to me, since eventually I'm going to have to be cutting a lot of the high end from this beat anyways. Now let's compare that to this preset right over here. If we look in the EQ again, you can see this second distortion adds more presence to that body and less presence to the high end. So this preset is more suited to what I need in this situation. I want my cowbell to have that thick cowbell body. Next, I'm going to add a bit of EQ to accentuate that body. And I'm also going to add a bit of delay here. Again, there aren't going to be that many sounds in my beat since funk is a bit more minimal, so I need to take the sounds that I do have and get them to fill up more space. Speaking of taking up more space, one additional idea that you can do is split your cowbell pattern into multiple layers and treat each one differently. For example, I can take this higher end melody right here and cut and paste it into its own separate pattern. At this point, I can put this layer into its own separate insert and use different effects or different presets so it sits in a slightly different space. So here I change the distortion preset so this cowbell has a little bit more attack. And as you can hear, I also added a reverb so this sound sits a bit further back from my other cowbell. This is not something that's entirely necessary by any means, but it can be a helpful tip when you're making funk especially for the reasons that you're going to see later on in this video. Speaking of which, another real fact coming your way, you probably didn't know this, but uh, FUNK is actually an acronym. That's completely true. It actually stands for FAT Hardcore Original Noise. Let's start building out our drum pattern. For drum choice, I'm going to be using sounds that also come from the TR-808 to stick with that older aesthetic. So here we have an 808 hi-hat. And the way you're going to program our drums will be to make them trap-esque. It's ultimately up to you what kind of pattern you want to make, but one tip that can help, for me at least, is to be a little bit more limited. Again, if we want these beats to sound old school, using less modern production techniques with our drum patterns and our bass can be a good idea. For example, with my hi-hat pattern, the only thing that I'm going to include is to create stutters. This is a technique that was prevalent and common back in the days, but doing things like repitching your hi-hats, which a lot of producers do nowadays, this wasn't really common. Same thing for using 808 slides, for example. These are techniques that you didn't hear in older beats, mostly due to limited hardware and equipment capabilities. This is something that I touched on in my video on making older boom bap beats. So to capture that older feel, being limited with these techniques can be a good idea. But again, it's ultimately up to you. This is just an idea to keep in mind. Next, I'm going to add my clap and my snare and combine them together. The reason for using multiple layers is to just take up more space once again. This snare here is providing a bit of that body in that lower frequency range. But outside of that, it's not very present, which is exactly what the clap is for. This adds more color and also more length to the sound. So when combined together, we get something that's just a little bit more robust. Let's go ahead and process these sounds as well. My intent here is going to be similar to how I treated my cowbell, where I use a little bit of distortion and EQ to remove the brightness from my sound. So let's do a little bit of a before and after. This is how my pattern would sound without all of my effects. It's very bright and the beat sounds a lot more clean, whereas afterwards, once I turn on all these effects, which again is mostly just EQing and distortion, We get that feeling like it's an older sound recording. Also, I'm going to add a layer of noise just so there's some presence in the higher end. In my last overexplained video, I talked about this concept quite a bit and how important it can be. Next up, let's add my 808. I'm going to look for an 808 that has a little bit more distortion and color to it. The reason being, as of right now, the only instrument that I have filling that lower mid, mid space is my cowbell. So using an 808 that has more distortion to fill up more space can be a good idea. You can hear the difference between these two 808s, for example. 
This one here is a lot more subby, whereas this one here has just a lot more color. So let's use this one. So let's go ahead and create a pattern here. Now let's add some of the smaller details into this beat. One of the characteristics of funk is that often there aren't other musical sounds or patterns that make up the beat typically. That cowbell provides the musicality of the beat and the remaining sounds that we'll be including will just be smaller one shots and stabs to add a layer of detail into the beat. And by the way, another funk fact coming your way, I bet you didn't know that funk was actually invented by a guy named Philip Onk. That's what funk is actually short for. That funk skeleton that you see everywhere is actually the remains of Philip Onk. True story, no word of a lie here. Again, don't look up any of this, just take my word for it. So now I'm just gonna grab a handful of smaller little percussive sounds and add them in as a layer of detail. Now finally, the last layer of funk, which is the vocal sample. Here, I can just go to YouTube and search up Memphis rap and grab one of these songs for educational purposes, of course. Next, I can use a vocal isolator online just to strip the vocals from it. This won't do a perfect job of removing the vocals, but it should be good enough. I'm gonna bring my vocals into my sampler here and also do a little bit of EQing, especially on the lows and the highs. I know a lot of EQs have presets to help you do this, like the phone preset here, or like the radio preset here. And this will really help you get that stripped down aesthetic on the vocal if it sounds a bit too full or a bit too clean. And now I will create that vocal loop using the sample. Something to point out though here, Serato automatically restretched my sample to be on time with my Beats BPM, so I don't have to do extra work here. But if you're using a more simple sampler, you may need to do a bit more stretching on your own. If you watched my sampling basics video, I walk you through a different ways that you can stretch your samples more effectively. Or if you use SliceX, I have a full tutorial on that too. The link to those videos will be in the description box below, along with all the other videos that I mentioned. So let's put a pattern together here. So now that we have all of our pieces for our beat, I think for funk it's important to do a little bit of extra work on your arrangement. These beats are pretty minimal in terms of how many layers they have. So we're going to be a bit more limited with how we can keep our beat interesting since we have just less layers to bring in and out. We're just going to have to use the layers and pieces that we do have here in order to keep our beat engaging. A good way of achieving this is by creating multiple patterns with your cowbell. So here I can duplicate this pattern out and create something slightly different. So I can just create smaller changes in this pattern. In the fourth bar, for example, I'm gonna change the rhythm as well as the notes that I use for this section of my pattern. I can even make more substantial changes though. I think what I'm gonna do is build a bridge section for this beat, so I'm gonna make more of a drastic change to build this. To go back to my previous point, this is partly why breaking your cowbell pattern into multiple pieces can be helpful. It just gives you different pieces and patterns that you can alter and change in different ways to create more variation. And so here's what we get. I will use this in yet another part of my arrangement. As you can see, to keep my beat interesting, I'm gonna have to use the limited amount of sounds and patterns that I do have and really push my arrangement. So here's the full beat arrangement and I'm gonna play the full beat for you. But before I do, if you found this video helpful, like and subscribe. And if you wanna check out any of the videos that I mentioned during this video, the link to that is in the description box below as well as the link to my free drum kit. And if you wanna join my producer community, the link to that's down there as well. Check out betterbeatmaker.com if you wanna join my full online beat making course. And I hope you had a wonderful time because I sure did. Uh, by the way, all the funk facts that I told you are fake. Anyways, here's the full beat. People say you're crazy, no doubt, no thinking. People say you're crazy, isn't it so just out? People say you're crazy, no doubt, no thinking. People say you're crazy.